Hello, today I'm going to teach you what a transistor is, how it works, and how to interface it with an Arduino microcontroller. In order to follow along, you'll need a transistor, a couple of resistors, an LED, and a breadboard. This is the schematic for a transistor. There are three pins, collector, base, and emitter. For now, you can think of a transistor like a switch. When you apply a current to the base terminal, current will be allowed to flow from collector to emitter. If you turn off the current at the base, no current will flow through the collector to the emitter, even if there is a voltage applied over those terminals. Check this out, it's a physical switch. When you push down on the push button, you connect the two terminals, and that will allow current to flow through. When you let up on the push button, the two terminals get disconnected, and no current will be allowed to flow through, even if there's a voltage across the switch. So that's really the same thing as a transistor. It's, it works the same way. Instead of using force, you're using electricity to control the electricity that moves through. There's a little bit of theory you need to know when using a transistor. A couple things to consider when building a practical circuit. So if you're new to transistors, you'll want to remember these facts. First off, the current going through CE is limited by the current going into B. So you can imagine. Imagine if you only put a microamp going into B. How is that supposed to turn on the transistor to maximum throughput? You know, um, it can't. So there, there is a threshold, and that threshold is 100 times. So the current going through CE will be no more than 100 times the current going into B. Uh, that 100 is uh, called the beta value, and it actually changes from transistor to transistor. Check the data sheet of the transistor um, in order to find out what the beta value is for that model of transistor. Second thing, and I really should have said this first, is that there is different types of transistors other than this, just this type. There's transistors that work using a negative current going through the, the base terminal or ground. There's transistors that work on uh, voltage rather than current, be it positive or negative. Uh, there's all types of transistors. Some of them have really high current readings um, and others have really low ones. Efficiency is a factor and cost is a factor. So um, look that up on Wikipedia, find out all the different types of transistors and pick the one that's best for your project when you need to. Next is that if you look at a physical transistor and I showed you one at the beginning of the video, um, all they are is little black boxes with three pins sticking out and the pins are not necessarily labeled. So you don't know which one is the collector, which one's the emitter, which one's the base. Um, all transistors or most of them should have a model number on the back. Go look that up online um, type it into Google and find the data sheet for the transistor and you'll find out which pin is which. All transistors have a current rating. The current rating across CE is the maximum amount of current that it can take before exploding. So make sure that you check the data sheet for your tr transistor before creating your circuit to make sure that the transistor will actually be able to take the amount of current that you expect it to be able to take. Uh, and if not, you could run into a catastrophe. So I mentioned before that current flows into the B and then that's multiplied by 100, right? So where does that current go? All the current that goes into B flows out of E. So in most circuits, what you'll want is E will go to the ground or um, you'll, you'll factor that in. You'll find the resistance from E to ground and then you'll factor that in to find the current going into B uh, when you do your analysis of your circuit. Most BJT transistors are designed so that current will flow from C to E and not the other way around. Uh, but I have noticed that there are some transistors that I have that current will flow from E to C when the transistor is activated. That's enough theory for now. Let's get on to a design challenge. So we have a microcontroller that can output one volt and we want to control a motor. Well, the motor probably needs more than one volt and not only that, the motor has a very low impedance usually and um, it might actually take more current than the microcontroller is able to output. So if we try to connect the microcontroller directly to the motor, first of all, the motor might not spin because it's not high enough voltage and second of all, the microcontroller could actually get damaged by uh, trying to output more current than it's able to output. So what we want to do is we want to use transistors to solve this problem. What we need here is an external power source. Let's say 12 volts. So we have our 12 volt power source and we want to use a transistor to allow the microcontroller to connect to the motor. 
So why don't you pause the video right now, take a minute, draw out the circuit that you think will work to solve this problem. One way that we can solve this is just by sticking a transistor here in between the motor and the power supply. There's other configurations that will also work, but for now we'll stick with this. The motor will be connected to ground, so as you can see, when the transistor is activated, the 12 volts will flow through the motor. Our temptation now is to connect the microcontroller directly to the transistor or space terminal, but that would be a huge mistake. Remember, the microcontroller can't necessarily power the motor, but the transistor is basically a, a short circuit, so what we'll have is the amount of current coming out of the microcontroller will be the same as if it was trying to power the motor directly, and that could damage the microcontroller. What we need is we need a resistor in between the microcontroller and the base terminal. For now, we'll set it to like 500 ohms, and we'll check whether that's a good resistance and modify the circuit later. Let's explore a variation of that circuit, which is a little bit easier to analyze. We'll switch around the motor and the transistor. Notice that I've written the resistance of the motor as 10 ohms. Let's do a couple of quick calculations now to analyze the circuit. 12 volts divided by 10 ohms, power supply divided by resistance of motor, and that is 1.2 amps. That will be the amount of current passing through the motor and passing through the collector emitter terminals of the transistor. That current should be about 100 times more than the current being put into the base. So the current being put into the base is 1 amp, 1.2 amps divided by 100, so at least 12 milliamps is required. We can calculate the maximum resistance that we can use at the base to get 12 milliamps. That's just equal to 1 volt, the power of the microcontroller, the, the voltage of the microcontroller, divided by 12 milliamps, the, the required current, and you'll get a resistance of 83 ohms. This is bad. At most, we can use 83 ohms, and yet we've used 500. One way to fix this is that we take away the 500 ohms resistor and put in something smaller, like 80 ohms. There's a problem with that though. The problem is, what happens if the microcontroller can't output uh, 12 milliamps? If that's the case, then we'd be burning out the microcontroller by adding a smaller resistor. So we have to have another, there's gotta be another solution to fix this problem. Can you think of what it is? Why don't you pause the video for a second and think of another solution so that we can use transistors to drive this motor. And here's the solution. We use two transistors in a configuration like this here. This is called a Darlington pair. Notice that each transistor amplifies the current going through by 100. So you use two transistors like this and you can get an amplification of maybe 10,000. So there's a new resistor that I've added right above the new transistor. We'll label that with R in a minute. Um, we need to find out what an appropriate resistance for that would be. And then we need to find out whether this configuration will be sufficient to power the motor at maximum throughput. We know that the outer transistor still needs 12 milliamps. That hasn't changed. So how do we get 12 milliamps? Well, that's equal to 12 volts divided by R. So we can calculate that our R value should be one kilo ohm uh, very easily. How much current do we need to drive this now? Well, let's see. The outside transistor needs 12 milliamps. So that means that the inside transistor needs 100 times less, right? Because the output of that is equal to 100 times more than the base terminal of the inside transistor. So you need 0 0.12 milliamps to drive the, the inside transistor in order to drive the outside transistor. And what we're getting is one volt divided by 500 ohms, which is two milliamps, which is far more than enough. So this should be a pretty safe system and we will be able to drive the motor at maximum throughput. Now let's do a real life demonstration. All right, so now that you know what a transistor is, let's see if we can use it to build something interesting. So I'll take my transistor here and I'll put it in to my breadboard like this. Okay, so for this transistor, and probably for the majority of, of uh, BJTs, the pin to the, uh, to the left here is your collector, 
the pin to the right is the emitter and the pin in the middle is the base. That's not always the case, but um, that's what it is here. And that's when the curve is, is facing you. Don't get it backwards, I've done that many times, and then it won't work. Okay, so we'll put the LED here before the collector. Notice that the longer pin of the LED is the voltage input, or it's, it's the positive terminal, and the shorter is the negative. So the current will flow from here into here through the transistor and it's ground. LEDs need a resistor because they don't have resistance, so that would cause a short circuit otherwise. So I'll just stick this in here. Okay. Make sure none of my wires are touching. Of course, transistors also need a resistor. That is the base because we can't assume that the microcontroller will have resistance unless it says so in the data sheet of the microcontroller. Ow, hang on a sec. Okay. There we go. So when we apply voltage here, transistor will turn on like a switch and that will activate the LED. All we need to do now is connect everything to the uh, microcontroller over here. So this will be the, the data signal that we'll get from the microcontroller. This will be our power supply, our uh, positive voltage and the uh, emitter of the transistor will be the output, the ground. Okay, I'll get everything connected. Okay, so I just connected all the wires here, and they just go into the microcontroller here. Don't worry about this other thing, this project I'm working on. Okay, so now we need to program up our little program to get this running. So, um, essentially, what we can do is just modify one of the programs that are already here, just for demonstra demonstration purposes. There's like a blink program, and it's using pin 13 right now to blink an LED. So let's change that to the pin that we have our data line connected to, which is pin 52. I'm not sure if you can see there. Okay. 52, 52, oops, oops. All right. Uh, and of course, pin 52 here. So let's just output that. Let's uh, program the microcontroller. And what you'll see is this thing will begin to blink. So now that we have this set up with, with uh, these wires, we can connect this orange wire here to a higher voltage if we, if we like. We can replace the LED with maybe a, a motor or something like that, something that draws a lot of current, and we should be fine. And that's how a transistor works. And that's how to interface it with a microcontroller. Thanks for watching.